Okay, sorry about that interruption. But God is allowing a lot of wicked rulers to rule all around the world to usher in the new world order. That's what God is doing. He's allowing them to sit in positions of power that will allow many abominations to rest upon, to be placed upon the law books of the land. It's like a bunch of evil people conspired. They got, went through the Bible and they're like, okay, let's pick out everything that is an abomination to God and let's put it on the law book so we can invoke the wrath of God. That's exactly what it is. If you really think about the laws that are being pushed in your country, even in subtle ways, their end result is to incur the wrath of God, is to provoke God to wrath. So be very careful as you, as a believer, sit down passively and allow the wicked to have their way. You should be interceding and covering yourselves and your families from the wrath of God that's going to fall. God is not dead. He's very much alive, but God is just sitting back and he's being patient. He's allowing them to do what they have to do to fulfill the scriptures of Revelation and the Bible. And when you see God rise up, uh, let's just say you don't want no part of that. Get into the ark of safety, people. Understand that ungodly laws will bring curses upon your nation. I don't care what part of the world that you live in. Once you put certain things in place, once you put certain things in your law books, when you make certain mandates to trouble the people of God, to disrespect God's statutes and his commandments, go read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 68 to see what curses will fall upon your nation. Understand in these end times, we will see exactly who the Old Testament God is. Listen, the Old Testament God was a faithful God. He was a faithful God, but he was a no-nonsense God. He was a killer. And the only reason God has been so patient and passive with us is because of Jesus, you know. Jesus is known as the lion and the lamb. Meek lamb. Quiet, humble. Jesus is be at the right hand of the Father interceding for our behalf. He's the, listen, between him and the Holy Spirit, that's the only thing holding God back from running hot. But in these last days, you will see that same meek lamb turn into the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's already starting to roar. He's already starting to roar. And that's why the wicked rushing to do what they have to do. If you really pay attention to the news, they ain't given nothing to chance to breathe. Everything is, we got to do this. We got to do that. They rushing because they know, they know their time is almost up. So we will see. If you live in, and you live long enough, our generation will see the Old Testament God because we are already seeing it right now. It's at a, it's at a slow pace. It's at a very slow pace. But it's going to have a snowball effect. It's going to get larger and larger. I'm sure you have seen death increase, steadily increase in the nation that you're living in. I see it here in the Bahamas. And God has been warning his people over and over. People have laughed. They've mocked his prophets. They call them doom and gloom prophets. Y'all really think if you're on your pathway to hell, God can cheer you on or he can correct you. Hmm? You don't think God can send warning, but guess what? Ain't nobody want to hear that. You want to hear about prosperity. You want to hear about the good. You won't even receive the good from God. But you got to understand the things that lead you to hell are the things of the flesh. These are things you don't want to have to deal with. Narrow is the gate, and there are few that will find it. Understand that when this time is up, God will arise and scatter his enemies. You better be sure you're not an enemy of God. You can become an enemy of God two ways. By quenching and grieving his Holy Spirit, one. When you quench the Holy Spirit, it happens when you when God tells you to do something. When one mind tells you to do something, you don't got to be a Christian. Please don't get it twisted. God will speak to all of us. God will speak to all of us. 
When God tells you to do something and you don't listen, you quench the Holy Spirit. And when you keep quenching the Holy Spirit, you start to grieve the Holy Spirit. And when you grieve the Holy Spirit too much, you know what God has do? He's taken him away. Now remember now, the Holy Spirit is the voice of reason. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks to us and tells us not to do certain things. Tells us what things to do. And if God takes that away, guess whose voice you're only going to hear? You're only going to hear Satan's voice. And his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He will lead you on that, that road, that pathway to destruction. Because all he care about is snatching your soul from God. Isaiah 63 and 10 says, But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy. And he fought against them. You don't want no part of God. That's why David cried out to God in Psalm 51 and 11 and said, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. If you look in scripture, everybody who left the presence of God or the presence of God was withdrawn from them, they went through literal hell. You got Adam and Eve. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. You had Jonah when he fled in the opposite direction doing what God told him to do. He left from the presence of God and his life went to hell. He was literally in the belly of Sheol and crying out to God. Jonah had it so bad he asked God to kill him. You don't want God to be your enemy. A lot of people God has given over to a reprobate mind in these last days. Reprobate mind mean you unrepentant. You ain't on nobody run. You done, you done, you done quench. You done grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit done get taken away from you only a matter of time before death come and sweep in. And that's a sad case. That's why I don't argue nothing. I don't argue nothing with nobody. If your mind is made up, your mind is made up. I'm not here to convince nobody of nothing. I'm going to do what God tell me to do. And I'm going to sit back down and sit small. I'm not going to argue with no one. Chronic willful sin. That's the second reason why. In John 5 and 14, after Jesus found him at the temple, he said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Listen, God is a forgiving God. But we tend to run out too much. When we know better and we keep doing wrong by God, when he cut that off, you don't know when you can reach the end of your rope. You don't know when you're going to reach the end of your rope. So you got to be very careful of the, 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 the road that you're trotting. Ezekiel 14 and 12 says, The word of the Lord came to me again saying, Son of man, when a, lin, when a land... Sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness. I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would only deliver themselves by their own righteousness, says the Lord when you see God has had enough of your foolishness, he's going to tell his intercessors to stop praying. No more grace. No more mercy. The wrath is about to fall. Ezekiel 14 and 19 says, Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury in it in blood and cut it off from man and beast, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. As I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would only deliver themselves by their righteousness. So a lot of people wilding out and rebelling against God because they think, oh, because I survived ten car accident, I had to survive tree stabbing and one shooting, you know, my mummy and Grammy press got me. When you say God said that's enough, your life can get cut short. You had enough time. But only God knows when that time is going to be up. Only God knows when he's going to call your number. Understand that sin is a stench to God. Sin smells stink to God. And, you know, God is beyond his throne, man, in his own business. And then you ever be sitting down and just be like, what that smell is? God is all knowing, you know. God like a parent. Wait, what that is? 
I know what it, I know what it is, but I want someone else to tell me what it is. Because I want to know, I hope and I ain't smelling right. God will come down off his throne to confirm it. In Genesis 18 and 20, it says, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So if you say God got to come down off his comfy throne to go see if what he's smelling is right, just know that destruction is coming. Just know destruction is coming. And when God come down and confirm it, you know what he's doing? He sent his angels to tell his righteous, look here, do this, do that, or move them out. If he can just, what I say, purge a nation, he can get his righteous out. But if not, if he just can deal with the wicked in the area, he can give his righteous instructions. He will tell you what to do to be safe. This is why you got to be, listen, you have to have a relationship with God where you can hear God's voice for yourself. You got to, your prayer and your fasting life got to be so on point that you ain't going to miss when God speak. Because God is going to send his angels down to protect his righteous. Understand, in Psalm 78 and 49, stop thinking that God is all love and forgiveness and you could do whatever you want to do. God is a God of judgment too. In Psalm 78 and 49, it says he casts on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. God have a branch of angels some stupid angels. All they do is destroy. That's all they do. And they are waiting God's command. Y'all better get ready. Understand that God purges using the elements. God can use the wind. He can use the sea. He can use fire. Whatever he has created by his hand, he can use. God is speak true destruction. And it don't have to be that way. We have the ability they change God's mind. Ezekiel 18 and 32 says, For I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God. Repent and live. Jeremiah 18 and 8 says, If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. Second, sorry, Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. But understand, if the area where you live in ain't on God run collectively like the people in Nineveh who received the word of the Lord and all them repented and made God change his mind, just know that wrath is coming. Judgment is coming. Jeremiah 7 and 16 says, Therefore do not pray for these people, nor lift up a cry for them, nor make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Do you not see what the cities, what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? So listen, in an intercessor who is obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, when he hears, stop praying, you would have a but God, but God nothing. You don't see what they're doing? You don't see what they flying up in my face and saying. You don't see the abominations on the land. You don't see they not turning. See, God could deal with rise and fall, you know. He could deal with rise and fall. A lot of people saying, oh, I'm ready to serve God because I this and I that. Listen, God could deal with rise and fall. But when you chronically and persistently, when you know better and you refuse to do better, you better believe judgment is coming. In Jeremiah 11, 11, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will surely bring a calamity on them which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I would not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. This is where idolatry comes in. Idolatry is the excessive reverence and worship of anything or anyone other than God. How could you say you want the blessings and the protection of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you serving other gods? How? How could you expect it? Let's be realistic, people. Let's try to be realistic when we're dealing with the word of God and our ex expectations from God. Because a lot of people's expectations are one way. 
We want to receive, 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 but we don't want to give. We don't want to do the simple things that God asks us to do. He, we don't want to obey his statutes and commandments. We want compromise. We want, want, we want to be married, but still out there committing adultery and still expect to be saved. Huh? We still want sweetheart. We still want fornicate. We still want to do the things of the flesh and expect God to pass us by. Pass us by? But the, but the angel of the Lord ain't gonna miss. The angel of the Lord ain't gonna miss because all they know is righteousness and unrighteousness. Not nobody dangling on the fence. That's why you got to choose this day whom you can serve. Make up your mind. Time is running out. Isaiah 5 and 4 says, What more could I have done for my vineyard that I have not already done? When I expected sweet grapes, why did my vineyard give me bitter grapes? Now let me tell you. What I will do to my vineyard, I will tear down its hedges. Tear down your hedge of protection now. And let it be destroyed. I will break down its walls and let the animals trample upon it i will make it a wild place where the vines are not pruned and the ground is not hold a place of overgrown briars and thorns i will command the clouds to drop no rain on it a lot of times we be become ungrateful we are very ungrateful people we want to do as we please and expect god to bless us bless us bless us bless us protect us protect us protect us let's be real when they cry out for help, this is Proverbs 1 and 28. I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me, for they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own contemplancy. Complacency, sorry. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear or harm. Jeremiah 23 and 20. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, in these end days, you will understand it perfectly. You are going to see mighty moves of God in these end days. And when people hear a mighty move of God, they're thinking power and anointing falling, but no one wants to think about judgment. When God moves in judgment, a lot of people who are out of the will of God will die. God is saying to his people, there will be a resurgence of the plagues of Egypt. And this is because God has to get drastic with some pharaohs that are oppressing his people and have them in bondage. Understand, Pharaoh had God's people bound up for many years. And all because he was intimidated by their success. You, you see, you could just be living your life and prospering, not bothering with nobody, but someone watching you with an evil eye and set traps for you so you don't make it nowhere in life. I know some people like that now. But God has to bring judgment on a bunch of proud, stubborn, and oppressive pharaohs. He has to bring them to their knees by fire and by force. So you can see God dealing with a lot of wicked people who he allowed, who he allowed to put his people in bondage. A lot of God's people are in bondage because of ignorance. They don't know any better. They don't know the things of the spirit. They don't know. They don't have a relationship with God. They don't have a genuine and deep relationship with God. We, we, we want to serve God when it's convenient for us or when we have a problem. That's not a genuine relationship with God. God must liberate his people from bondage. And I'm talking about ancient strongholds of witchcraft, ancient strongholds of sexual perversion, ancient strongholds of idolatry. Things have been holding his people back. Things have been holding his remnant from rising up. He has to kill some pharaohs. And that's why your relationship with God is so paramount because you got to hear when God say, get up from your land or get up from your house and go this place and go that place. In order for God to kill your Pharaoh, you had to been walking in obedience to get to the Red Sea. So he could have parted for you, for you to get to your promised land. God had to remove his people out of Egypt. Anything to do with Egypt has to do with bondage. 
God fought for his people to come out of bondage. But God still needs your cooperation to free you. You have to be obedient to God's voice. Understand that power and wealth must change hands. So don't mind the wicked prosper. Don't mind them lying and deceiving and doing all they got to do to make to amass their wealth. Because guess what? Everything is digitalized. Almost everything is digitalized now. One glitch. God could cause one glitch. And all the money gets sent back to the righteous accounts. One glitch. One blood clot and they could fall over dead. God could do anything but fail his people. Understand that when God starts dealing with the wicked, it will spark the end time revival. It, you will never see power, the power of God fall like it going to fall when the Pharaoh start dropping. And this will be the last, when I say the last and the largest um, gathering of the end time harvest before the rapture. So you can't afford to miss this move of God. You cannot afford to miss it. It's going to be historical. God is warning. Another pandemic is coming. Everybody, tell everybody, tell anyone next pandemic. You don't want to hear it, but it's coming. And it's going to be a spiritual one. It can be different from COVID. It can be a spiritual pandemic because God will cover his people, his real people, the people who have a genuine relationship with God. Not no surface Christian. Not someone who just know God. When, not someone who operate in their flesh. Someone who will listen to God when he speak. You know what I realize about God? He's don't want to tell us the things we want to hear like that. Most of the things God tell me to do, I don't want to do. If I had my way right now, I'd have been wrapped up in bed and join this nice wind and, and rain. But no, God say, get up and warn his people. Put these scriptures together and warn his people. So, I got to do what I have to do. So I will be covered in the day of judgment. Understand. The wicked have warned you. They don't tell you. God's, God warning you. The people in power warning you. President Biden already said, hey, there's going to be another pandemic. I need a couple billion dollars more to prepare for it. Bill Gates don't tell you there's going to be another pandemic. There's going to be a different pathogen next time. Bill Gates and his wife sit down and say, oh, the next pandemic is surely going to be something. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're looking at each other like, yep, yep, yep. How are they so confident? What they know, what you don't know. But guess what? God ain't going to hold no secret from his children. He will tell you to prepare and how to prepare. When I say this can be a spiritual pandemic, don't believe for a minute. You can live any kind of way you want to live. Go get some oil from a prayer meeting, slab yourself down, anoint your door, tie string on your door, do all them things which you see other people doing and have a and have protection. The mark that is going to be placed on God's people is going to be a spiritual mark, not a physical mark. God can recognize obedience and righteousness and he will allow it to pass over you. This is not the time to allow no Jonah to be in your house. Stop feeling sorry for people. Now, I say not to be compassionate and, and, and do the things of God, you know. I'm saying to exercise wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and discernment. Because the thing with Jonah, Jordan didn't need help. Jonah needed to stop his foolishness. He needed to stop running from God. See, a lot of people want to live all kind of way, do what they want to do, and when people feel sorry for them, they want relief from their affliction, but they don't want to serve the one true living God. Jonah's problem came because he was running from what God told him to do. And that's what's happening to a lot of people who are being oppressed and going through all these vicious cycles in life. You have to make up your mind you want to serve God. That's what you need to do. Stop dangling on the fence. Stop playing church. Stop playing with God. You can hear voice, God voice clear as day and you're still running. And that's why God got you in the whale, in the belly of the whale. Because you won't do what you won't do. And God says, stop running and come do my first works. Repent and do my first works. Galatians 6 and 17 says, from, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. 
It's a spiritual mark. It's a spiritual covering that you will need for the angel of death to pass you by. Exodus 12 and 23 says, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. Understand the next pandemic is for the Egyptians that have had God's people in bondage. It is not for the righteous. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over your door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. Exodus 15 and 26 says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight, give air to his commandments and keep all his statutes. He says, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that heals you. Deuteronomy 7 and 15 says, The Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Y'all need to give God a mighty praise. Y'all got to give God a mighty praise. Now, God say, dealing with Egypt, anything that has to do with Egypt has to deal with bondage. Isaiah 5 and 13 says, Therefore my people, God's people have gone into bondage because they have no knowledge. God said to specify and to hammer in about evil plantations. An evil plantation is an evil seed that is planted to manifest at a later time. There are different types of seeds, so there are going to be different types of manifestations. Okay, It can be planted through spiritual or physical means. Through spiritual means, someone can come in your dream and plant this wickedness in your dream. Matthew 13 and 25 says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. So the most common dream that people will have concerning this would be when you're eating and drinking in your dream. You're not supposed to be eating and drinking in your dream or even being injected with something in your dream. You don't know what it is. I don't care if it's a doctor that's doing it. God is saying that is not from him. Understand, this is a common way in which poisons, most commonly cancer, is introduced into you, into your life. And because people think, oh, that's just a dream, they don't know to rebind and rebuke it. They don't know to fast and pray and cancel the dream. They don't know how to curse that to the root. Huh? Pluck it up, cast it out. They don't they don't know to bind, rebuke, and cast out every evil plantation. They don't know that lay the axe to the root. And chop it away. They don't know how to release the fire of God on it. They don't know how to purge. You got to fast and break. Fast and break. Read Isaiah 58. Fast and breaks the bonds of heaviness. He, it breaks every yoke. So Listen, you don't even have to be a Christian. If you battling an addiction, guess what? I The word of God promised you in Isaiah 58. It will break the bonds of wickedness. So if you are bound in the spirit, if you have a stronghold of your life of alcoholism and, and, and drug abuse, you could spend time with God. Fasting is only spending time with God. No eating, no, no entertaining, no foolishness. Turn off, put your phone on silent. Just spend time with God and cry out to God with everything that's within you. Cry out to God. Come before God with fear and trembling. Mighty God. You need to fast and pray for your deliverance. Many people are saved, but they're not delivered. Understand that salvation, sorry, sin deals with, salvation deals with the remission of your sins. Deliverance deals with evil spirits. Evil spirits that cause you to sin. Evil spirits that are, that have the ability to keep you bound. Through ignorance, through generational curses. Somehow, if a demon is afflicting you, it has a legal right to access you somewhere. Somehow, some way, maybe you might have inherited down your generational bloodline. Mighty God. So you must curse it to the root. Every evil plantation. Another way that evil plantations can be placed in the, in the physical realm now, they could put it in your food, they could put it in your drink. They can also pass it through hugs, kisses, Physical contact, the laying on of hands. That's why God tells you to lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partaker of his sins. Be very careful. 
ministers of the gospel, be very careful. Make sure you're laying hands under the unction of the Holy Spirit, not just doing what you've been taught through tradition. Through tradition. Be very careful of who you allow to lay hands on you. Be very careful, people. There's a lot of evil plantations that are being put on people. If a person, if the person who's planting the evil seed doesn't have access to you to get to your blood or your DNA, they will put it along a path where they expect you to walk, expect you to touch somewhere, you, an area you're going to frequent. That's a back door. That's another back door that they can use. I had an experience one day. I pulled up home after work. And I just as I was about to open the door, the Holy Spirit says, no, shut your door. I, he shut it very sharply. And God, I closed the door back and I panicked because I look and I think this might be a snake or a centipede or something. You know, I didn't see nothing. I peeking over the, the window. I couldn't see nothing. So God said, do not come out your car. He said, look. And I kept looking. I didn't see nothing. So I stopped my car back up. And I pulled to the end of the driveway and I turned back around because I ain't gonna lie, I was scared. So I look and I see nothing moving. So I anoint myself again. And I approach and I start to feel uneasy. I start to feel it when I say, whatever this is, this is very evil. And when God told me, look down. And when I look on the ground, there was this pile of dirt. And you could see the pile of dirt was wet and they mix it with something and then they let it dry. It was something that was very obvious. Like whoever did that knew, I reversed my car a certain way. So that was right to my door. And I tell you, if it wasn't for God, I'd have been dead a long time. If it wasn't for his Holy Spirit, I'd have been dead a long time. So I look at it. I went up close to it. And it was like a bunch of snail shells, some sticks, some dirt. And I can't remember what else, but a bunch of things was in it. And you could tell it was just planted there. Because if it was there that morning, I would have stepped in it and you would have seen my footprint. You could see the dirt was just put there. So I prayed to God about it. God told me how to destroy it, how to get rid of it. And I ain't going to disclose that here today because at the end of the day, I don't need you repeating what God tell me. God gave me instructions for what was planted for me. You need to work. Listen, this is why I tell you, you need to work on your relationship with God because the enemy's attacks can change. And no matter what the attack is, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to minister to you and tell you exactly what you need to do. Amen. Now, I know a lot of people ain't want to hear this, but I got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. The enemy has modernized witchcraft. There's another evil plantation that God explained to me. I got to explain to you just how God explained it to me. It's called an evil plantation. It's called, I call it the vibe. And when, when I hit my, my arm, y'all know what that means. It's called the vibe. We call it the vibe so I don't get, you know. Now, it is a unique weapon of darkness because what the enemy has done in these end times, he has modernized witchcraft, so he's made it friendly and cool. Because back in the day, they used to hunt witches down and burn them alive. God can't, see the devil can't, can't mess with that, he can't afford that. So what he do? He makes it friendly, he makes it inviting, he get, allows the person to get close to you. Make you trust them and not God. Bunch of end time deception and trickery. But anyway, in Revelation 18 and 23, it says, For your merchants were great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. So witchcraft and sorcery will be used tremendously in these end times to trap people in order to destroy them. Okay? Now, I notice anytime you start talking about demons and witchcraft, everybody shut down because uh, the spirit of fear and oh, that's terrible. You're not supposed to touch it. Listen, it is what it is. Witchcraft and sorcery is a weapon of darkness. I mean, I don't know how you could not believe in it when it's all throughout the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you got to understand some very wicked people are on this earth. If there's a, if there's a devil, there's a God. If there are angels, there are demons. So it is what it is. And I'm going to tell you what God is saying concerning it. Now, you have to pause for a moment and understand the religious beliefs of the people who are pushing the vibe. Many of these people are open Satanists. Many of them are atheists. Many of them are um, eugen eugenicists. I don't know if I said it correctly. And if you know what eugenics is, it's basically them trying to improve 
the human population through genetic manipulation. Um, I don't know about you, but the God of Abraham, the God that I serve, when he looked at everything he made on the sixth day, it was good. It was perfect. He could arrest on the seventh day. Ain't nothing was wrong with God's creation. Okay? Y'all mining people like Yuval, Noah, Horari, whatever. From, um, what do you name? The World Economic Forum. He's the, the, lead of, the, the lead advisor, the chief advisor for them. You realize the blasphemous things he's be saying? And I talking about recently, I talking about over the years, he's been blaspheming against God openly. Talking about free will is over. They they gonna make humans hackable and, and humans are inferior and all kind of foolishness. Uh, talking about there's no more free will. Um God um Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead is fake news. All kind of things they talking about and talking about exalting themselves against Christ. Above the God of the clouds. That's what he said. He said the God of the clouds. Hey. The last set of people who thought they was going to exalt themselves against the creator was kicked out of heaven. What y'all thought? Was kicked out of heaven and cast for eternal damnation. Where you going with this? But anyway, this is their technology. Okay, this is their beliefs that they put into their product. And a lot of you have that in your system. For whatever reason, everybody had a reason why they did it. But God said, do not touch it. But anyway, everyone did what they had to do. So what God is doing now is providing a way of escape for his people who have made that mistake. But understand now, you can't go with no dry prayer. You got to understand when you took that, you came into, whether you believe it or not, okay? You came into an ungodly covenant. One. That allows Satan in who only know to steal, kill, and destroy. Understand the Antichrist agenda is being set up before our very eyes. It's in operation in a subtle way. Right before our eyes. Antichrist means it opposes Christ. God say, be fruitful and multiply. They want to decrease the population. Okay? God wants people to prosper and be in good health. They want to steal, kill, and destroy. Understand the religious beliefs behind the people who are pushing this agenda. So God is saying, be, we are living in the days of Noah and the same fallen angels who was telling people what to do to alter God's Creation are the same people in operation now, operating through the vibe. So what you have to do as a believer, if you have made that mistake, you need to renounce the legal rights you gave the enemy to your life. Not only your life, but your body, your soul, and your spirit. Remember back in the day, in order for them to put whammy on you, I call it whammy. In order for them to put whammy on you, they had to get a piece of your hair, a sample of your blood, or your nail clippings, something with your DNA in it. And here you are being deceived and giving them unlimited access, not only to your blood, but to your DNA. I don't care what they say about it. This is what God is saying to his people. You have to renounce what you have done. You have given the enemy legal access to you. And that's why he's stealing and killing, destroying without opposition. Your prayers can't work because you are in a binding agreement with Satan. You have to free yourself from him. Leviticus 17 and 14 says the life of every creature is in his blood. They know this. That's why they need access to the blood. Anytime you want something from Satan, you want to sell your soul to Satan what they want. They want a blood covenant. They want a contract. It don't matter if you was duped. It don't matter if you was deceived. A covenant is a covenant. And God has to respect covenant. Whether you realize you were duped or not. So God is saying renounce what you have done. In order for you to repent. And you have to come before God with fear and trembling. You got to fast and pray for your deliverance. Because you have been bound. Body, soul and spirit. Your entire being has been bound. And because of the spiritual ties. Your body is being destroyed. 
Your physical body is being destroyed. Your soul and spirit are bound. And when your spirit and soul are bound, then your physical body starts to die slowly. Spiritual death has to come before physical death. And if you are alive and you are watching this message, you need to repent. There's nothing. Listen, you can say what you want to say about me. But I can tell you this. There's nothing wrong with renouncing on godly covenants. There's nothing wrong with repenting. You will find people who have a problem with that. There's nothing wrong with repenting. There's nothing with what God is asking his people to do. Because as long as you allow the enemy in your life, you are limiting God. You are limiting the Holy One of Israel. And the, the devil is having a field day. So prepare your physical and spiritual bodies for this next pandemic that everybody is warning you about. Take care of your spirit man first. Loose yourself from bondage, Zion. Shake yourself from the dust. Come before God with fear and trembling. Come before God with fear and trembling. And let him clean this up. Let him loose you. You got to pray, pray and cry out like David in, one, in Psalm 142 and 7 says, Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. So yes, your soul can be bound and on its way to hell. And you think you're doing right by God and you have no idea. So God is saying to warn his people. You ain't got to listen to anything I say. I only decree and declare what God say. But get your house and your lives in order. God said also to warn you about another branch of witchcraft called remote control powers. Because once you have an ungodly covenant in place, particularly with the vibe, God is saying there's something attached called remote control powers, which means they can control you from any part of the world. They can control you from any part of the world by the push of a button or by a thought, whatever it is. Could put an end to your life. And like you, you don't act like you don't see the people dying, dropping down there, that not waking up, going to sleep and not waking up. You're seeing it before your eyes. And many of you are afraid. Many of you are depressed. Many of you are worried. Many of you are in and out of the hospital. But God has a way out for his people. But there's no other way out but through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive the word of the Lord.